Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying this gorgeous day we're having. It's a great day to have some home improvement, don't you think? I would like to welcome Meredith Jones, who is the co-owner of jo uh, Jones Warren, sorry, <laughs> Jones Warren Home Inspection Services. And she's just a wealth of knowledge. She provides um, CE credit for realtors for free. So this is for you, Meredith. So let's welcome Meredith. Yay! How are you, darling? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming yeah. on. Yeah, so um, it is a great day. I, you know, it's nice that we get to enjoy some spring weather. Um, and, you know, and with that, since we're all at home a little more frequently these days, there are um, some projects we could even look at doing around the house while we're at home. So I thought I would mention a few um, easy things that we could be doing around our house, um, if that sounds good with you. Oh, fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah, so I'm going to to mention things that are fairly um, low enough skills that we most of us could do it and not high cost. So first things is like interior paint. Um, those usually are really um, not super expensive and make really big impact. Um, you could even look at things like painting cabinetry. Um, I know I've been thinking about that in my kitchen. Like we're really ready to redo that. And so I was like, oh, maybe just painting it would be a good idea. So that's an easy way to make a big difference in your house. Not a lot of money. Um, just take your time. Uh, the other thing right now is a lot of people want to be out on their decks. And so... You know, most of our decks are made out of wood, and so mm -hmm. to make it last, we really need to clean and seal it every couple years at a minimum. So most people might think, well, if I don't have a power power washer or pressure washer, I can't do it. And that's not the case. You actually can do it by hand. It is a little bit more um, exercise intensive, but uh, if we've been sitting around, maybe we should get out and do some more exercise. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. So I actually am going to send you a resource um, about how to do that um, by hand if you need to. Um, of course, you may be able to rent a pressure washer. So now is a really, really good time. Most of the pollen outside is is about done. So it would be a good time to yeah, go ahead and clean yeah. it. I know, right? <laughs> I've been dying. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sniffling and people run from me. I'm like, it's not Corona, people. It's oh, not. There's some of us that said we were going to make a shirt that says, it's allergies, really. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but stay six feet away. <laughs> yeah. So, I, um, so, yeah, so now is a good time to get outside because the pollen's dying down. And it's a better time to go ahead and clean and seal or paint or stain your deck. Um, definitely that'll help make it last for a lot longer than it normally would if you don't. Um, the other thing is, is depending on how high your house is, you may want to take a look at your gutters and downspouts. We've been having a lot of rain. When anybody tells yeah. me they start having a little more water coming in that they didn't used to, I'm always going to tell you to look at your gutters and downspouts first. Um, ours, and I know at my house, we have a lot of pine trees around. Um, we have to clean ours several times a year, honestly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you feel safe, um, now would be a great time to do that. You might be able to hire somebody to do it as well because it doesn't require you to be out there with them. So that is another consideration if you don't feel safe. But I will tell you, um, a lot of people end up with water in their house just because they didn't realize how clogged up their gutters and then eventually their downspouts get. So, so does it go into the house or around it the... Can. It can do both. So it actually, people don't realize is when your gutters get full, it can push the water back and into the house down the walls. You can actually have water going down the interior walls for a while before you ever realize you've had a problem. So... That's another reason you definitely want to keep it um, cleaned out. But yeah, you can actually have it in your basement too. So um, definitely want to be careful with that. The last couple last things is dryer vents. Um, I a lot of people don't know my background was actually in construction prior to our home inspection business, and we did insurance claim repair work. So we actually repaired several fires that happened from dryer vents. 
And what happened? Oh, yeah. And I never would have thought of dryer vents. I, don't I wouldn't have either. And now I am so like obsessed about that. Like I will not leave my dryer running if I'm not home. I won't do it if I'm going to sleep either, by the way. Yeah. Um, and what happens is we just get a lot of lint in there over time. And so it can be pretty easy to just move out the dryer, detach the, the hose, clean it out. That can take some time, can be a little messy, but it is worth it. I mean, if you have kids, you, you just want to be careful. So it's another one that's not terribly um, skill oriented. Just take a little time. Yeah. And then the last one that we almost see universally on home inspections are people not sealing their concrete cracks. So there is a saying in construction, it's not if your concrete will crack, it's when. <laughs> so um, that happens. But the way you can preserve your concrete, like on your driveway or your walkways, is by simply sealing the cracks. And you can get tubes of concrete sealant that's clear for like five or six bucks from Lowe's or Home Depot. So easy, low skill level. You probably have your kids help you. They would enjoy it. And um, you would actually be doing something really good um, to preserve your concrete around your house. So those are some tips to do while we're all hanging out around the house a little bit more. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, does anyone have any questions? Um, Megan would like one of those shirts that says it's allergies, seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, it a friend a, of mine was going to make them. I need to find out if she did because I, I think a lot of us. She would this. make a killing. Yeah, she would. Yeah. Absolutely. If you've got a cricket, I think you can make it. Make those oh. shirts. Oh, cool. I want a cricket so bad, but anyway, that's another that's another <laughs> video. Um I on my Facebook page I do I have this list and if you would like a detailed list, put your email in comments and me or Meredith will get in touch with you and um get that list to you. Um, so bring on the questions, y'all. Well, I was um, going to go ahead and mention one other thing, um, that we've been doing for people since we're all in our house. Um, people may have just general questions about something that's going on at their house, um, or just general home questions. So we've been offering free consults via video, just like this, um, to anybody that wants us to to chat about something. So like last week we did one with a cute little couple and their and their parents. Um, they were each in separate locations. So the kids owned the house. They had some water issues. Um, oh of dear. Various sorts. Yeah. And I mean, you would think like that's hard to do by video, but literally they're taking us around all the house, getting in the crawl space with the video. <laughs> so we did a full outside assessment um, by a video. But what was great about it, because we're not doing construction, we were just able to tell them first steps like, Hey, we need you to, you, you need to go clean out some of the uh, kind of guttering on the ground around your house. Once you do that, you know, run some, run hoses down your drains and see if those are functioning anymore. If they back up, they're not. So we were able to give them some steps first before just going and hiring the waterproofing company, which would be very expensive and not necessarily needed. So we're happy to do that. We offer that to anybody. There's no cost um we may or may oh, not that to is help so you. kind that i mean that's yeah. community service and i love businesses who are giving to the community so thank you meredith yeah. thank you for that Absolutely. um yeah what how do they get in touch with you if they have yeah they can um, um i just say emailing me may be the best so office at jones Warren, and that's W A R R E N dot com. That's probably the easiest way because then we just um, can set up a mutual time for all of us to get on like a Zoom or FaceTime or, or a V Live, whatever they want to use. Stoneswarren dot com, right? That's it. Yep. And you have a website, which is we, W. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just Joneswarren dot com. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Something that, in my interest, pre-inspections, uh, what do you think about that before somebody puts their house on the market? And do they need it? Yeah, I think I've always been a fan of pre-listing inspections. Um, because even though it's been a seller's market, um, still people, if they find 
unexpected things on their home inspection report, they still may shy away from buying the house. So that still is happening prior to the, the stay at home orders. Now, I think it's going to be even more essential for sellers to do a pre-listing. And it's, it's for a couple different reasons. For one thing, it's going to be potentially longer. If you find that you need to make some repairs, you may take more time to get them done than if you were um, trying to do them in two weeks before closing. And that's always been difficult, but I think it's going to be more so. And also uh -huh. by doing it ahead of time, you can also make sure you're getting a really good price. Um, right. Just finding the only person that can do it for you in X number of days. And the um, stress, the stress when a home inspector comes in yeah. and the buyers request repairs that you could have done right. probably right. cheaper at a lower price or, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing uh, too is, is that um, it really creates a sense of trust with the buyer. Um, when we've been involved with pre-listing yes. inspections, um, our, the sellers we've known have put the inspection report out put anything in there that they said they fixed and said, here's, here's what we didn't. Here you go. You know, yeah. so, um, it doesn't mean that the buyer would not do their own inspection, but we've never had a buyer come back and find anything significant that wasn't on our report. So people may have that fear, but, um, we've never had that happen. Um, and I just think that the buyers feel a lot better going into the offer Right. Because it's kind of like I equated to when you go buy a used car. I want to see the car facts. And if that owner has like all their records from everything they've ever had done with it, like I feel pretty good about this person selling me a legit car. Yeah. All their and oil think, changes every yeah. three months. And yeah. I had the tires rotated and, you know, whatever that all is, as minor as that seems, um, it's the same thing with people buying houses. They're always worried that they're going to miss something or yeah. the house is not being taken care of very well. So I really think sellers can actually make more money in the end by going ahead and doing it because they'll save the money on the repairs. I think they'll get better offers and they're mm -hmm. going to lose less deals um, if a buyer gets scared off because of what's coming on the report. They've already right. seen I mean, it's, it, they're really not going to get any other information that they didn't have. So um. Because with buyers, I would write, I would say this is a very good sign if there's a pre-listing or if there's an inspection report on the dining room table when I show yeah. the house um, that these people have pride of home, they yeah. care, you know, well maintained, and they're giving you a good product. They're offering a good right. product, and I'll tell my like sellers that as well. Yeah, it's a lot of like integrity behind it, right? Like, you know, we're, we're, we did a good job, but we also want to um, be fair to you and just right. give you the information that you're going to want anyway. So apparently I've heard more and more as I've spoken to other agents um, around the country, some states, that's like always the way it's done. I think that's going to become more common here, not just because of the situation, but just because it makes real estate transactions work a lot better for everybody involved. Yes. How much is a pre-listing inspection? So it's it's always based on size and age, but we do give a fifty dollar discount to sellers, and so we always ask that question: Is this a pre-listing inspection? Because awesome. we want to entice the sellers to please do inspections, because we really always hate it when we see a buyer come back because they passed on a house after the inspection we did. That's really never our intent. So right. I think that's the kind of things that would go away. And we just want sellers to be willing to like, Hey, let's, you know, let's help ourselves. <laughs> right. And to buyers, um, Alabama yeah. is a caveat indoor state. So that means buyers beware. And the onus is on the buyer to locate latent defects. Right. Latent. Is that no, defects that's not known to the seller. Right. Yeah, that's you're right. It is latent or defects okay. unknown, I guess. However you want defects to say Defects unknown. Okay. I'll, I'll put yeah. aside the legalese. Defects yeah. unknown to the seller. Um, in Alabama, the seller only has to disclose health and safety issues that they are aware of. I didn't realize that. I thought they had to disclose anything they knew. So I didn't realize that. Huh. They don't. Well, they're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the here's the fact of the matter about.
about that, right? Most of the time where we find the major issues aren't generally where the, the homeowners are looking. They're not going to get in the attic and crawl through it or crawl through the right. crawl space. They probably haven't been on their roof because a, no. a lot of roofs, um, if you if you had my roof, you wouldn't be getting on it. I, I don't want to get on it. So, um, so it is very possible they could have problems they don't know. I mean, yeah, right. Completely. So. Exactly. And it could just be like with the roof, just shingles and what, yeah. a bowl. What is that thing called? That? The vents, the different vents or yeah. that ridges. It just, there's a lot of different configurations on roofs. So, whereas a buyer may ask for a whole roof when all you oh, need right. is to do these repairs. And yeah. um, that would, that would save you uh, stress as a seller. Right. I, so like, what people don't realize is your shingles may last 20 to 30 years ish. Uh, but like things like pipe boots will, uh, boots, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. The pipe boots will start leaking somewhere between six to 10 years. And so people will start thinking, well, I have a leak. I must have a really big problem. Like, well, no, your pipe boots just need to be replaced. So yeah. Cause they're made out of plastic and the sun degrades them. them. Yep. And yeah. they crack. So yeah, those are the kind of things that's good to just get in front of. Um, or if we see like old water stains when we're doing an inspection, like those need to oh. be cleared up too because oh, we yeah. have to, yeah, we got to put our moisture meter on it and say, well, it's not active right now, but we don't know if it's been fixed. So it's those kind of stuff that like trip up the, the, um, the deals and they don't have to. So, right, right. Yeah. Um, how, how have y'all been coping? I know about the virtual um, help uh, consult. Yeah. How else have you been coping? Like when you do inspections? Um, yeah. So there's a lot more stuff that the guys are, are taking. So, you know, they have masks, you know, they're doing gloves, they're doing disposable foot coverings for the house inside the houses. You know, they're going to wipe down with Lysol all the door handles, like before they open Supras, things like that in the house, um, just to make sure they didn't, you know, touch anything they weren't, or, you know, putting germs on something they didn't mean to. Um, we're also, we are limiting who can be at the inspection. Um, we will limit it to just the buyers. And, and people may think like, that's really weird. But sometimes if we have a family, like you may have a first time home buyer with their parents, and you know yeah. other people coming and so we're and all the children yeah yeah all the children we had dogs <laughs> um show up yep i've um, had that at open houses and i'm like oh my god get that cute right? little dog out of here yeah i know <laughs> the homeowners so, knew. so we are limiting it to uh, the adult buyers. So if it is a family, we're asking them not to bring their children. Now, sometimes the seller may have more limitations on that, but then that I let, I let you guys work that out. If the seller doesn't want anybody else, then we let you guys handle that. But, and um, we are asking just for the purchasers. If it's a couple, that's fine. But some of them are also, we, we've also started offering like video consults afterwards too, um, because some buyers are, are just, them through. Yeah. yeah, some of them don't want to be there, or we've had quite a few out-of-state buyers that are not here. Um, so we'll do the same thing. We'll get on video if there's something they want to see or we think we need to show it to them, whatever they, whatever information they think they need. But, um, but basically, other than a lot of extra safety protocols and trying to really control the environment of who's there, um, it's pretty much, you know, normal business. So Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? Um, like I said, this list that um, Meredith ran through did, is posted on my um, Facebook page. And if you want a flyer, if you have any questions, please comment or um, private message one of us, whatever we can do to help yeah. you. So, M Meredith, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I mean, just, you know, feel free to reach out to us, just like Jana was saying, because, you know, we're, we always want to help people any way we can, especially right now. So, yeah, just let us know. Yeah, we're here to help you. Yeah. So, thank you so much. Yeah. And, um, thank you.
you enjoy, get out there and enjoy this gorgeous day. I think I'm going to take the afternoon off and I'll be back at Good. seven to celebrate our hero today, which is awesome. an educator. So y'all take care. Thank you, Meredith. And I look thank forward you. to working with you very soon. Sounds good. So, thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, this takes a moment. Okay. I, I got <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'll cut this out. <laughs> Bye.